Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I want to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. So I taste wines. See what I grade them, decide if you want to buy them or not. Today we're going to do Pinot Noir and there's a special reason I'm doing Pinot Noir. It is because somebody informed me on Twitter and it's all the years I've been in the wine business Sorry, boy, my friends from down south, but this is or May is Oregon Wine Month. Um, always made a big deal out of Washington Wine Month. Sorry, you know I lived in Washington most of my life, so you know I always focus on that. But I thought it would be appropriate to focus on Oregon wines in May on a few of my episodes. Now I've been away for a little bit. I, you've, Hopefully some of you have noticed I haven't done an episode in a while. I went on vacation, took my camera with me, I interviewed Bill Powers, I, I, I loaded a video over there, but it took forever with the baud rate that we had, you know, uploading and all that, so it took me about two or three times to get that one out. I'm back on track. This is my Friday episode on Oregon Pinot Noir. Now the cool thing about Pinot Noir and one of the things we like as um, wine guys is when the movie Sideways came out and Miles waxed poetic about Pinot Noir, it shot the sales through the roof. I mean, you could not keep Pinot Noir on the, on the shelf. And Oregon loved it because, hey, you know, they were selling out. They were selling out of vintages before they went on to the next vintage. Who doesn't like that? Of course, for, for me it was great because, you know, we tried to sell Pinot Noir a lot of times. We, you know, there were always those die-hard Pinot Noir fans. But it really enlightened people on this varietal. And so, you know, it helped a lot. It's leveled out. It's not as hot as it used to be. You know, the, the people are fickle. You know, my neighbor's no mowing the grass out there. You can hear him. It's a beautiful day outside. Anyway. So, you know, Pinot Noir from Oregon is probably, in my opinion, the best place you can get it in the United States. Uh, you know, California does some decent Pinots. Uh, there's a couple in Washington, not very many. But outside of Burgundy, the best Pinot Noir you can get is from Oregon. And the prices are good. I mean, you get a good Burgundy from France. Yeah, you're talking easily over 30, 40, 50 bucks and some well over a hundred. So, you know, they, you just kind of compare it. These are actually really good values for what, for what you get. One of the things about Oregon Pinot Noir, real quickly, too, is that there, it is very affected by um, uh, the season, the climate, how the weather is that year. Vintage to vintage, it can change, just like in Burgundy, because the Pinot Noir grape is so finicky. One of the hardest grapes to grow and to turn into wine. Pinot Noir. So, you know, you can understand why uh, some of these guys like to do it. It's a challenge to produce really good Pinot Noir. So we're going to start out with uh, Ransom Wine Cellars, I believe, yes, Ransom Wine Cellars, P Jigsaw Pinot Noir 2012. Now speaking of vintages, uh, 2012 was a, a very good vintage in Oregon along with 2010 and 2009. 2011 was a little difficult and from what I'm hearing 2013 is it also a tough vintage. But you also talk to some of these winemakers and they like tougher vintages. It brings out different qualities in that wine that they like. More feminine maybe, more uh, intricate, who knows. Uh, some like tougher vintages, some don't. This is 2012 which is a good vintage. So I get a little bit of burnt, like cherries, like a... This is very light on the nose, which can be typical of Pinot Noir. Definitely cherries. It has a little bit of like a, almost like a, not burnt rubber, which is not really a good visual. But there's a little bit of like a charcoal element to this one little earthiness. I get a little hint of black tea. Maybe a little bit of root beer. Sarsaparilla, as my friend Ted always likes to say, sarsaparilla. Let's just say root beer. 
uh, pretty close to the same thing. Very, very, you know, very light on the nose. There isn't a lot going on just to get a little cherry strawberry, a little bit of that charcoal action, a little bit of tea and root beer. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very friendly on the palate. I like this one. Right off the bat, you get like this really nice dark cherry element. A little bit of back by a little bit of black tea. Good, good acidity. I mean, it's not. It's it's a nice. It's very. It's a tan in the delicious category. I'm liking this one a lot. It has enough acidity to kind of you know you can feel it on the backside of your palate. You can um, you get a little bit of that, uh, just a little bit of that root beer on the back end with that black tea. You know, I you know this would be this is a good Pinot. I like it. I, I mentioned it was seventeen dollars. You know, it has super complex. It's pretty simple. I'll give it that, but it's very good. It's very tasty. I mean, it's one of those kind of pinots where you're like, yeah, yeah, I could, uh, I can drink that. It, it would be really good with salmon because it has enough acidity to really match up nicely. I'm liking that one. I'm going to give that one a B minus. You know, only because it lacks the complexity. Let's move on to the next one. Let's give it a little rinse. Hey, I think I forgot to rinse on that first one. Wow. Now we're on to. Uh, this is Acrobat, is the name. This is also $17. This is also a 2012. And it says Oregon. Did I mention that this said, yeah, Willamette Valley, which is, of course, the, the big area of Pinot Noir in Oregon is Willamette Valley, although there's some great Pinots that come from all over the state. Willamette Valley is sort of the, the one that everybody looks to. And, uh, when it, and, and if it says Willamette Valley on it, it has to have at least 90%. Pinot Noir in order for them to put that on there. And this just says Oregon, so it means I can source a fruit from other places, maybe down in the Rogue Valley besides um, Willamette Valley. So Acrobat Pinot Noir 2012, $17. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a deeper nose. I, I get a kind of an intense sort of... Uh, uh, Almost a smokiness on this one, which is really interesting. So kind of like smoky cherries. A little bit of baking spice, which I find interesting. You know, a lot of uh, Pinot Noir out of Burgundy will have what they call Asian spice. Well, this is more of a baking spice. They do give oak treatment to Pinot Noir. Not new oak, at least not in most cases. I hope not. Yeah, there's like these uh, like warm baking spices on top of cherry with a little bit of root beer going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. This one's a little brighter, a little more intense on the palate. Definitely has some layers in there. I get, I'm getting the the black tea, I'm getting the cherry, I'm getting almost like a little blueberry hit, which is interesting. On the back end, a little raspberry. Yeah, like the root beer and black tea and the cherries all kind of blend on the palate. Nice, intense finish. I mean, I'm still tasting this baby. It's making my mouth water. You can probably tell. Has a little bit of a. It, it really makes your mouth water at the back side. Cheers. There's a good Pinot Noir. Definitely brighter than the other one, more acidic. But. It's got enough going on that it just kind of makes it nice. 
I could really drink this by itself because I'm kind of an acid freak. You know, I like those acidic wines, but it's not over the top. It doesn't pucker you up too much. But really nice, good balance. You can really see the difference in the two as far as this one was delicious, yes. This one's also delicious, but just a lot more going on with the palate. For the same price, you know, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm going to have to go B plus on that one because that is an excellent Pinot Noir for $17. Let's move on to the next one. So this is Raptor Ridge. Pinot Noir. The good thing too about Pinot Noir coming up, but we're into the season of the salmon, at least here in the Pacific Northwest, and Pinot Noir is just fabulous with salmon. Also pork, if you're doing some pork tenderloin, it's good there. Raptor Ridge, Oregon Pinot Noir, Willamette Valley, 2011, and this is $23. I'll be curious on this one because uh, it's a 2011, which was a tougher vintage, but like in all cases with wine, Good winemakers can make good wine in any vintage. So, let's see what we get on the nose. Definitely funkier. This is more of that like burnt match. Root beer, a little stink action. This is kind of the, this is what we'd say, we, we use the term Burgundian. What we mean is that it has a lot of similar characteristics of a Pinot from Burgundy. A little root beer on the back side, burnt match, a little funkiness. Cherries come through, a little strawberry action. There's a little spiciness on the, just coming through. Maybe a little bit of Asian spice. Little red flowers. I'm getting some uh, perfume, like potpourri type red flower thing going on. Uh, I, I hope I mentioned that's $23, so this is a little bit more than the other two. This baby's close to mouth puckering. It's got big, big acidity, no doubt due to the cooler climate in 2011. But it still has a lot going on. It's very bright cherry, a little bit of raspberry, like underripe ras red raspberry coming through. Definitely the red flowers are there. You get like a, a maybe a, almost like a dried red flower, like dried rose petals, dried violets are coming through. A little bit of root beer action on the back side, which is very common with uh, Oregon Pinot Noir. Good depth. The earth tones come through on the back side. It has a real grip on it. I'm, I'm saying that this wine is built really well. It's a good Pinot Noir. Right now, you need food with it. But, I'm, you know, lay, lay this down, I think you'll get a little bit more fruit coming through, the dried flowers will come through, the spices will come through a little bit more as that acid settles down a little bit. Yeah, the cherries, like, like really, really bright red cherries, cherry skin almost, a little cherry pit thrown in. A little bit of underripe raspberry coming through. Now, there's some of you that might, you know, if you're buying your first Pinot Noir and you're, are you trying different Pinot Noirs? You, this is an acid bomb. I'm going to go right in the middle of these two. I'm going to go B. I don't, can't guarantee that that acid will balance out. It's still a really good Pinot Noir. Be excellent with food. Be worth laying down for a little bit to see how it goes. It's a, it, 11 was a challenging vintage, but this is well made. And definitely a little more feminine with that kind of acid coming across. So congratulations, uh, Oregon. 
I wanted to show a little love to my neighbors down south. It's Oregon Wine Month, where my next episode will be on some Oregon whites. And then we'll do another Pinot Noir episode. You know, because really, Oregon makes some fabulous wines, as well as Washington, California. So hopefully you're uh, showing some love to Oregon uh, this month. And cheers. Thanks for watching. Here's to keeping the snob out of wine.